Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another Garmin Marine Team webinar. Uh, my name is John Spittle, and I wanted to cover something that I get a lot of phone calls on from both dealers and consumers, and that's our uh, GFL 10. It's a fluid level sensor, and I want to run through calibrating that fluid level sensor. As always, if you have specific questions on this webinar, please email us at marine.training at garmin.com. Don't forget to visit us on our YouTube channel. We just uploaded a lot of our past webinars on our YouTube channel. So uh, go to Garmin YouTube and you can check those out under our webinar series. So let's get started. What are we gonna cover today? So I wanna go over what a GFL 10 is, how to connect it to your analog gauge or tank sending unit. Wanna make sure that you have a good NEMA 2000 network and that it's functioning properly. Uh, what to do when you have fuel level that's not calibrated. So remember this GFL 10 is a tank level sensor. So it can sense from a resistive sending unit, multiple uh, tanks. And we're gonna show you what that means. What happens when my fuel level is missing from my engine gauge page? Why is it missing? Um, why do I only see one of my fuel tanks? So let's say you have got a boat and you have two fuel tanks on board and you want to see those work independently on your, on your engine page or your fuel page and you're not seeing those. We'll go over how to fix that and remedy that situation. I'm going to go over actually calibrating a GFL 10 with one MFD or Garmin multifunction display and one GFL 10 and then how to set up the engine gauge page. I'm also going to go through calibrating one Garmin MFD and two GFL 10. So let's say you've got a, a vessel that has two fuel tanks on board in this example here. GFL 10 is an inexpensive add-on to your vessel. Um, it can actually help you take your analog gauges if you want to completely take them out and then show all your tank level information through your Garmin MFD, um, and then a, a basic NEMA 2000 network. So let's go ahead and get started, and we'll take a look here at the GFL 10 fluid level sensor. So with this GFL 10, um, it takes the analog information and then transitions that to digital on your actual Garmin M MFD. Um, you can view tank levels. You can view multiple tank levels. In this example, I'm gonna just show you information from fuel, but we could do freshwater tanks, raw water tanks, live well tanks, anything with a resistive sensor. So if you take a look here, this is showing our um, engine gauge page. And on this vessel, this is kind of gonna be our, our final uh, screen that we're gonna show today. We show port and starboard on there, and then they're working independently of each other. So today we're gonna be using a resistive sensor with an analog gauge. So I have this resistive sensor, we have taken our analog gauge out. Why is a GFL 10 a good idea? Well, let's let's think first. On a older boat, you want to get rid of made, maybe some of your gauges. Some of your gauges aren't working, but you know your sending unit or sensor is working, and you want to show them through your Garmin display. You have that ability to do that, and it's a very simple setup. And this is what we actually used here. So when we take a look, I connected the blue and the black wire from my GFL 10 to my sensor. And now I need to go ahead and calibrate it. On the other side of your GFL 10, that's gonna go to a uh, NEMA 2000 backbone. I used my 8612 to provide the screenshots in this webinar. So like I said before, multiple fluid types can be displayed as long as you have a um, resistive sen sensor or sending unit. So you can show fuel, freshwater, wastewater, live well, oil, black water. 
Um, each one of these GFL 10s can run these or show this information independently when properly set up. Also remember too, if you wanted to get more than just tank level height, we also offer a GFS 10 fuel sensor. This is going to add fuel volume and time um, that actually will go in line on your fuel line. So just remember that we have that and there is the part number for the GFS 10. So if you wanted to get actually flow information, volume, time remaining, you can use this. Set up for both of them on the calibrating the tank levels is gonna be the same. So the very first thing, I'll, I'll tell you what, when I get to a boat and I have a GFL 10 that's not working, I would say the majority of time it's either in the calibration and second is going to be the NEMA 2000 backbone is not functioning properly. I see this a lot. So I'm not going to go into a big deep dive into a backbone for NEMA 2000, but just know your basics when you're actually setting a backbone up. You know, it's a linear backbone consisting of T's, resistors or terminators both male and female on either end, 12 volt power, and then your T's go to your device. So your certified NEMA 2000 device. So let's call this our MFD, and let's call this our GFL 10. And then you can see some of the basics down there. Take a snapshot of this if you want to kind of remind yourself of the parameters that you need to cover on this. There's an easy way, and uh, we've done this a lot in some of our past uh, uh, trainings that I've done, and it's troubleshooting with a terminal uh, strip tester. So what this is, you can make this at home. It's pretty simple. I just took a NEMA 2000 cable, and I cut it in half, and then connected it here. I actually, you only really need one side. You only need the one side to connect to your NEMA 2000 backbone T. I actually connect the other side. So now I have a complete NEMA 2000 cable in case I need to do some troubleshooting and take a cable that I think is suspect and not functioning. I can actually use this as my cable. So along with this and a simple multimeter, I can measure resistance on the backbone and want to make sure it's going to fall between 54 and 71 ohms. And then I also can measure voltage to make sure that I'm, you know, showing 12 volt power on there. So let's take a look and show how we can actually use this. Measuring voltage. So 12 volt to 13.84 is nominal. And the tolerance range that you're going to see is 9.5 to 15.75 is okay. So I've got my NEMA 2000 backbone. I have power, two terminators on either end. In this example here, I have our GPS antenna connected to the backbone. And then this is connected to my multifunction display. So I've taken my um, multimeter here and where the black and the red power come in. I've got my probes here and I'm running at 13.8 volts. So I know that I have the proper power on here. And um, that's the first step that you wanna make sure to cover. The next thing that you wanna do is measure resistance. So there's a few things and you wanna make sure that you measure resistance to find out what's happening because a lot of times your backbone is not just in front of you. It's not just a short little backbone here with two devices in power. This, you know, you can extend this backbone. Um, so this other end might go way up in the boat somewhere else, but if you have an injection point here, and remember you can leave an open T on a backbone, just make sure it's covered and waterproof. I like to leave an open T because then I can actually use my field tester here. Oops. Um, 
So what you want to do when you measure for resistance is you need to make sure that you disconnect 12 volt power. The way I disconnect it is not at the battery switch on the boat. I disconnect it right at the backbone, right where I can see the power injected. The reason for that is if this backbone extends throughout the vessel somewhere else, there might be another power source on there and I need to make sure that there's no other power. So actually before I test for resistance, I unplug the power that I can see, I measure voltage again to make sure I'm showing zero. Then at that point, I can come in on my blue and my white wires here and measure resistance. And as you see here, I measured 59.1. When you remove a terminator, you're gonna be up around 120 ohms. And I measured at 117.8. So I need to look in that vessel and make sure to find where that other terminator or where the other end is and terminate that because that will cause issues on your backbone on any device that's connected to your backbone. Let's say that you have, you read uh, around 40 ohms. So here we're 39.6. What that indicates to me is I have a third terminator on the backbone. So what happened was somebody might've had an open T and they took a terminator and covered it thinking that was gonna keep it watertight. But what it does is actually drops the resistance. So I've identified it here. I remove that, plug power back in, and my backbone is now uh, properly functioning. So number one, flu, uh, fuel level is not displayed on the engine gauge page. The number one phone call that I get. So this can be from uh, a, a consumer that just put this on their vessel. They're taking out old analog gauges and putting this on board, or it could be a brand new boat that you just bought and maybe the uh, engine gauge pages weren't set up, okay? the You might have done calibration on the GFL 10, but you haven't entered that data into the engine gauge page. So you'll see this a lot, and this I see a lot on uh, uh, new vessels that have just been sold. You know, sensor requires level calibration. Why and what can I do? So we're gonna go through that and let you know what you can do, how to calibrate it, and how to enter that information and show it in different gauge uh, pages, chart page under your data bars. So we've completed the calibration, but why is it not displayed in my gauge? I don't see any fuel information, nothing's changing here. We'll show you how to fix that and remedy it. This is probably something I get the most right here. So it's your first engine gauge page. You've got your tank levels here. You don't see anything. I'll show you how to fix that simply. Okay, I have a boat and it has two fuel tanks. Why do both gauges display tank one. So I get this a lot and I can show you how to remedy that situation to show two separate tanks, tank one and tank two, or port and starboard. And that's what we'll show you at the end when we're gonna do uh, customized installation of this. So let's show you how to calibrate the GFL 10 one MFD and one GFL 10. So one of our Garmin chart plotters, in this case, 8612 XSV and a GFL 10 tank level sensor. First thing you wanna do, if you have some uh, questions on if I have a GFL 10 on the network, you need to check the NEMA 2000 device list. So what we're gonna do is go into settings down on the bottom center there, then we're gonna to go to communications, NEMA 2000 setup, and device lists. So what you wanna do is check and see what is on our NEMA 2000 backbone. In this case, we have an 8612 XSV, and we have a Garmin GFL 10 uncalibrated 
fluid level sensor. And the very first thing that I like to do when I'm calibrating this or setting this up is first change the name. Just makes it easier, especially when I, when I get on a vessel that might have five different GFL 10s going to five different tanks. It just makes it easy for me to know exactly what GFL 10 I'm actually changing. That makes another good point. When you're actually connecting to your NEMA 2000 backbone, make sure you take a label maker and label that device. It makes it a lot easier for you to see what's actually connected to your backbone physically. So I'm gonna select the GFL 10, and then I'm gonna go in and change the name. So in this case, this vessel just has one fuel tank. I'm gonna just go in there and type in fuel tank. Now in the NEMA 2000 device uh, list, what you wanna make sure to do is select review. So review is gonna help us go in and calibrate and select tanks. So again, GFL 10 and review. So you get a lot of information here. This is gonna show the model, uh, manufacturer, serial number, We've named this fuel tank of our GFL-10. And then we wanna complete this information over on the right-hand side. So let's go in here first. If you notice right now, it says tank number two. Let's go in and correct that because we're gonna name this tank number one. You physically need to type also, you need to type zero and one when you're changing this and then select done. It's very important to do that. Even if I saw zero one already appear on this screen, I retype it just to make sure that those values are stamped into this unit here. All right, the next thing that we wanna do is tank capacity. Later, we were gonna add total fuel capacity under my vessel. So this is really important when you have multiple fuel tanks on board. So let's go in here and select tank capacity. And in this case, we're gonna have 100 gallons on board on this tank here. So physically type zero, zero, one, zero, zero, and then done. And now on to level calibrations. Select level calibration. And if you notice over here, I need one or more points. I actually like to add at least three calibration points. It just makes the accuracy of your tank information uh, better. So some of these tanks that you get out there, you get on to a huge boat. We've got some guys doing, you know, four, six, eight calibration points on this. And it makes it easy, this is a 100 gallon tank, so I can do zero, 50 gallons for half, and then 100 for full. So let's go in, select calibration point. And obviously this is easy when you have an empty tank. So if you've got a tank that's you know half full, maybe, and, and you think it's half full, or you're not quite sure, maybe you have to fill it all the way up and then work backwards on adding your calibration points. So let's go in, we're starting with an empty tank here. We're gonna type in and physically type in zero, 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 and then done. I wanna add another calibration point. Here, I filled it up, I put 50 gallons of gas in, the, in this vessel here, and now I'm gonna physically type zero, five, zero, and done, and then on to the third calibration point, and I'm gonna type in 100 and then done. You'll actually start to see your calibration levels change here, your fuel level in this example here, so we know it's live and we know it's actually functioning. Select back. And now we're on to our fluid type. So this GFL 10 can work for multiple tanks. 
And when we select a tank number in the fluid type, we're actually instancing this particular NEMA 2000 device that allows us to use multiple GFL 10s on the same NEMA 2000 network. So let's go in and it's gonna to default to fuel, but just make sure that you select it again. That way we kind of stamp it in memory. So we have fuel and then we're gonna go back. Now, I'll briefly talk about generic configuration here. This is really used for our legacy units. If you don't see tank number or fluid type on your display, you might have an older Garmin display and you're gonna need to go in and manually configure this under generic configurations. So if you select generic configuration and you need to change your instancing where our old units actually instance them automatically. So let's say that you selected either configure or review on some of our legacy model units and you don't see tank number up here, you're gonna actually go in and physically type under generic configuration instance equals one D-O-N-E. And we can do this for multiple tanks. So we can do this you know, from numbers one to 16. All right, so that allows us to manually configure this GFL 10. Remember too, that we need to actually type in the fluid type. So this will also assist in instancing this. And so what we need to make sure to do is type in fluid type equals, and then we're gonna do zero. So if you notice over here, and this is from the GFL 10 manual, that zero equals fuel, one equals fresh water and so forth. So now if we didn't have this fluid type appear, I can manually instance this fluid type in a legacy unit. And remember, all of these settings need to be done through a Garmin uh, device in order to set these up. Let's talk a little bit about factory defaults. So if you went in here and you needed to go ahead and wipe out some of the information, factory defaults will clear tank numbers, tank capacity, and fluid type back to factory settings here. So you select factory settings, and then it will tell you the exact GFL 10 that you're gonna restore the setting to. This is important if you have multiple on the network here. Level calibration. Let's say that you, you yourself or you're a dealer and you have a customer come in and say, hey, my fluid levels are off. My level of my tank is off. I don't feel it's correct. You can select level calibration and you can come in here and reset the calibration points. And then start fresh and then go back in there and do your three calibration points. So remember when you reset this, this is only resetting this information in that specific GFL 10. So now let's configure our engine gauge page. So from here, I'm gonna select the engines. This is probably the first page people wanna add this information to when they're doing their tanks. And then you wanna make sure that you press and hold fuel gauge on our touchscreen unit. So remember on a touchscreen unit, you can press and hold that fuel gauge there. And once you do that, you're gonna actually see a gauge menu pop up. And then at that point, you can go in there and say, okay, so this might be the very first thing that you do. Somebody might've already configured the GFL 10. They just didn't put it into an engine gauge page or any gauge page. And all you need to do is press and hold, select replace data, in this instance, we're gonna select fuel. Now I could actually also, in this instance, come down and select tank level. So I could actually select either one. 
tank level or fuel. So we'll do tank level here. I'm gonna select tank. So this is important if you had multiple tanks and multiple fuel tanks. So you'll also see tank number two on this page if you have two fuel tanks. So we're gonna just select tank number one. And so now we've entered that in and saved that particular value. So let's add fuel level to our nav chart data box. This is another, once you have this information in here, this is another neat area where you can add it. So now you've got information right on your navigation chart page. So we're gonna select nav chart. So on our touch screen, we can press and hold that data box you wanna change. So we're gonna press and hold that. And then you're gonna see a pop-up up here. We wanna replace that data with our fuel information, tank level information, and we can select either analog or digital. So let's just, in this case, let's select analog and see what happens. There you go. So now we have our fuel level on our navigation chart screen. So pretty neat little uh, feature that you can see there. All right, so let's move on. Now we have one uh, MFD and we're gonna have two GFL 10s and let's show you how to set that up. So if you notice here, let's just say that we added another, another fuel tank to this vessel. And this is my original fuel tank here. I'm gonna go in and change it later, the name. Um, but let's go ahead and focus on the second GFL-10, which is uncalibrated. So what do I like to do first? I like to change the name. So I'm gonna select the GFL-10, I'm gonna name it. And this is now actually a starboard fuel tank. So I moved my other tank, it's on port. Now I've got a starboard fuel tank. And voila, I went back prior and I actually changed this to port fuel. So now let's go in. I'm going to select the starboard fuel tank and I'm gonna select review. Same thing, we wanna work our way down through the column on the right-hand side here. We wanna make sure that we're changing or calibrating the proper GFL 10. So I'm gonna select tank number. So see it's defaulted to one and we wanna make sure that we physically type in zero two done and now we've changed it to tank two. This is also a hundred gallon tank. So let's go ahead and put in zero zero one zero zero, select done. And now we're gonna do calibration. Remember, I like to do at least three calibration points. We can tell right now we are not calibrated. So let's go in here and add a calibration point. Physically type in 000. Add a calibration point. Type in 050 for half a tank full and add your third calibration point. Physically type in one zero zero and done. We can actually see the sensor is sensing our fuel level. So let's go ahead and go back. And now we're gonna type in the fluid type. So this obviously is gonna help us instance this so we can use that same GFL 10 for multiple tanks. Fluid type, fuel. All right, 
And now don't forget to add total fuel capacity for the vessel from the home screen. So what we wanna make sure to do is we're gonna go into settings, my vessel, fuel capacity, and then we have two 100 gallon tanks. So total those up and we're gonna type in 00200 for 200 gallons and then select done. So now we have 200 gallons for our entire vessel. Everything is now set up correctly. So why do I only see tank one and how can I display both tank one and two? This is a simple fix. So let's go ahead and take, take that information here. So we're gonna come from our one helm AV engage page. We're gonna go into engines. Notice that I'm displaying the same information. So gauge one and gauge two is showing tank one. And that's a simple fix. Press and hold. Once that happens, your gauge menu will pop up. We are gonna select tank in this uh, example. And there you go, now you see tank two up here. So we're gonna select tank two and boom. Now we have two independently working fuel gauges or fluid level gauges for two fuel tanks. So tank one, tank two, working independently. Final step. And this is one that's overlooked a lot, but make sure you do this, just makes it simple and easy once you're actually setting all this information up. Labeling the tanks. So what you wanna do is from the engine page, select menu and then installation. So we're gonna select menu, installation, and label devices. We're doing our tanks. We can also change engine labels here, but let's go into tank labels. Fuel. And confirm the tanks to be labeled. So show that we have two, tank one, tank two. Notice my instancing here, a zero and a one. I know they're working independently of each other. So we can use numbers or we can choose to use names. So let's go ahead and say, I wanna name it. I want to customize tank number one, we'll select that. This one is my port tank. So let me select port. Notice all the other options that you have there. And then under this port subset, you also have a lot of different labels. We're gonna just do port, and select that. Same information for tank two, other than we're gonna change it to starboard. So tank two, starboard, and we'll select the top one here. There we go. So now we've got these fuel tanks correctly labeled. We'll select back. And now we take a look at our fuel gauges. They're correctly labeled. Port, starboard. So now you can get out on the water. So I wanna thank everyone for watching this webinar series here. Hopefully that GFL 10 webinar here is going to be some assistance to you guys out there. As always, if you have any questions, please contact us at marine.training at garmin.com. Also visit us at uh, our Garmin YouTube channel. We will upload this video to the YouTube channel and you can go ahead and look at it there. So thank you very much. We really appreciate it and get out on the water.